It was Commissioner Bush that led the opportunity for Abilene to have a veteran cemetery uh, in which, a yeah, round of applause for that. And as chairman of the Veterans Land Board, George P. managed a cemetery in my beloved Abilene uh, in which my uncle was laid to rest. He also created an initiative called No Veteran Left Behind, which provided an opportunity for all those men and women who have served who may then have a loved one, and so those step forward to serve those families. In this room today, we have law enforcement officers, grassroots supporters, business owners, Texans, and proud patriots. We have a number of individuals who are here tonight to communicate to you um, how important that this evening is. I want to invite several of them to come see, to come visit with me and say remarks to you. The first is Wasim Hernandez. Wasim Hernandez is on the front lines of the biggest battles in our state, winning the hearts and minds and heart of Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. He is immediate past president of the Adaldo County Young Republicans and is a current vice chair of the Republican um, Federation, a group bringing the exact kind of energy and drive that we need to help grow the party and spread the conservative message of freedom. Thank you very much, sound man. <laughs> Liberty and family values are the next generation of Texas. Join me and let's welcome Mr. Hernandez. Test, test. All right, I got to turn it on, right? Hello and buenas noches. My name is Joaquin Hernandez, like Joaquin, but with swagger, as President W would say. I'm currently serving as vice chair of the Texas Young Republican Federation, and I've served in multiple capacities in our local chapter and with our local Republican Party. I hope that what I say tonight inspires you to get involved in this campaign because we need more leaders like George P. Bush. My first interaction with George was in the campaign trail for the 2014 general election. He didn't have to say much to win me over and it wasn't because of the Bush name. Just the simple fact that he was supporting a member of our local Young Republican chapter was enough. Not just any member. He was a young man straight out of college, wet behind the ears, and running on a shoestring budget for state representative. And you know what? George was the only statewide elected official or candidate, sorry, that got behind him. And, and it told me everything I needed to know about George. It told me that he believed in the everyday man, he believed in the underdog, and most importantly, that he's a doer. That wasn't a one-time thing either, where he tested the waters and see what happened. Absolutely not. Over the years, since that time that I saw him running, He's continuously invested resources in his time in Hidalgo County to make sure that the grassroots are engaged and motivated to stay in the fight. And if you know anything about Hidalgo County, you know that the Democrats have held power since Reconstruction, and they'll do anything to stay in power. I lost my place. <laughs> they'll threaten people's livelihoods if they don't support or if they dare support or vote for Republicans. So having a statewide official visit our area and continuously encourage the troops on the ground breathes new life into these gritty and persistent warriors. If you've watched the results from the 2020 election cycle and you saw how many voters in Hidalgo County trended over to the right, you've seen that that kind of leadership that George brings has paid off. 
we need more leaders like George P. Bush. As a young Republican, I spent hours working on identifying what factors motivate young voters to turn out and vote. And it's this one thing, a leader that challenges the status quo, that disrupts the status quo. This means unconventional campaigning, creative solutions to age-old problems, and authenticity, something that many politicos struggle with. And I don't say this lightly, but George P. Bush is definitely a disrupting the status quo kind of leader. He did it when he endorsed... He did it when he endorsed President Trump as the 2016 victory chair. He stuck to his guns and, and his support of America First policies. And he's done it by supporting Hispanic candidates down ballot across the state. Also, have you seen the cool Guayaveras, the cool campaign shirts that they've got? That's definitely disrupting the status quo. Where's, where's JR? I'm still wondering where mine is, but we'll, we'll get to that later. I'll end my remarks with a personal lighthearted story. In 2018, I joined the George P. Bush campaign as a surrogate at political events in the RGV and several other counties. I immediately thought, this is gonna look so good on my resume, but I didn't know that it was gonna be even better for the best job that I have, which is being a husband to my lovely wife. And I, and I say this because my father-in-law, the only Republican that he had ever voted for was George W. Bush. So I knew when I was on the Bush team, I was gonna win him over, and sure enough, I became his favorite. George, thank you for being in the trenches with us. Thank you for disrupting the status quo. We're with you, let's get you past the finish line. Pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes. Let's win. Thank you, Wasim. We are just getting started. Our next speaker for 25 years did not work outside the home, and she is a fire pistol. I'm talking about Mrs. Karen Newton, who is currently a program chair for the National Federation of Republican Women, the largest grassroots organization of Republican women in the nation. That should get a round of applause. She is the immediate past president of the Texas Federation of Republicans. Well, I'll let you go. Hey, how is everybody doing? How exciting is this? Oh my gosh, the energy is fantastic. Um, of course, I'm going to lose my notes here. So, when Commissioner Bush asked me to speak tonight, I was so excited, I was fired up, I was doing like cartwheels in my head. I am so excited that he is, he, I am so excited to be here speaking about him tonight. Commissioner Bush has been a friend to grassroots organizations in Texas for a long, long time. And the first time I met him was at my first TFRW regional meeting in 2013. And he was so impressive. I was so impressed with how authentic he came across. The way he spoke about faith and his family, it's real. It's not talking points. We have so many politicians nowadays that use faith and they use family to sell an image they're trying to brand. And there's nothing worse you can do to a woman is try to fake that, right? If you can't be authentic about your faith and your family, how are you authentic in your professional and political life. It just doesn't go together. George P. is a family man, and more importantly, a man of strong Christian faith. During my time as TFRW president, he was one of the first elected officials I would call when I needed something. And I'll tell you, he was so generous. He was generous with donations, but more importantly, he was generous with his time with TFRW. He always showed up with that big, beautiful smile on his face, ready to help the Texas Federation 
keep Texas red. I think we're all excited right now to see and have such young, charismatic leadership on the rise here in Texas. And Commissioner Bush isn't just someone who talks the talk, he walks the walk. He lives out our conservative values each and every day. He has stood strong time and time again on the issues that mo matter most to all of us, right? Like securing the border, holding our government accountable, right? Pushing for more transparency for taxpayers, because we need to know where our money's going and who's a better steward of our money than us, not the government. Protecting the children of Texas against human trafficking that was a project that he worked with TFRW on while I was president. And of course, let's not forget backing the blue. Our blue needs more backing right now, more than ever, more support. He is a man with strong convictions. He stands up from, for what's right all the time, no matter what the cost is. In 2016 and in 2020, he stood proudly with Donald Trump. Even when it wasn't so popular in some political circles to do that, George P. was there for President Trump, or candidate Trump then. And I think we can all agree that President Trump was one of the best things to ever happen to this country. And Commissioner Bush, he knows that. He fought hard for President Trump and Republican candidates while he was victory chair in 2016. And he helped lead our state to victory and help keep all our statewide seats, which is important and we have to keep doing that. And I know he'll do the same in 2022 and beyond. George P is the right man to help lead the charge to keep Texas red. George P, George P is a rock star. And I hope you all will join me in supporting him in helping us keep Texas red. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chairman of the Border Commerce and Security Council, Nelson Bolito. Nelson is the leading voice on border security issues and has served in the senior level positions at FEMA, at the Department of Homeland Security, he worked closely with governments in the USA, Canada, and Mexico to improve cross-border affairs and security relations. He is a board member of the Border Patrol Foundation. He is also a U.S. Navy Reserve Officer who served in our nation's military alongside with Commissioner Buss. We are honored to hear from him today. Thank you, Mayor. How's everyone doing today? You know, um, I don't have any notes, and, and I'll tell you, I'm going to talk from the heart. And what I know about Commissioner Bush and our friendship that started in 2002 when we were both co-chairmen for the Viva Bush Initiative back in 2004 re-election for his uncle. And that's going out and recruiting Latinos, going out there and, and, and doing something very different, showing compassionate conservatism all over the United States. Something that we've, I believe we've missed for many years now. You know, we joined the Navy, a few years later we joined the Navy. He went Intel, I went Public Affairs. Uh, he went to Afghanistan. I've done some tours overseas in the Asian, Asian market. But uh, I'll tell you, as a Naval officer, he was, he was out there, he's out there, and, he, and it's funny what he said to me a little while ago. This whole thing again, is like another deployment. He's being deployed out to Texas to go fight for what's right, recruit the people that's right, and at the same time spread the ideals that he absolutely believes for, and that is everything that he's done as, as, a, as a current commissioner and everything that he believes in, in, in his strong conservative values. As, a, as the chairman of the Border Commerce and Security Council, there's no question we need people that understand the border and what's going on. But not just what's happening with illegal immigration and not just what's happening with the security issues on both sides of the border, but really what's needed is somebody that understands the trade side, the quality on the border on both sides of the border, that's not afraid to go to the other side and make friends. 
that's working with other governors, with other legislators, to understand the idiosyncrasies that happens all over our Texas border that means for $1 billion of international trade on a daily basis and thousands and thousands of jobs for Texas in the energy markets, in the fruits market, and it, you could name it, meats, everything. Somebody that understands that market, somebody that understands the border, and also is compassionate, that takes the time to understand what is happening. That's what we don't have nowadays. We have talking points, and we have people that go out there and say things. Yeah, there's issues. There's no question that there's issues. But we need to support the guys in green, which is the Border Patrol. We need to support the guys in blue. And more importantly, we need to support the folks from ICE. The folks in ICE, that's right. The ICE agents that I work with on a daily basis, if you still talk today about the morale that they have today with what's happening in the White House, it is terrible. These people have signed up to protect us, to follow the laws, to enforce the laws. And you know, and Commissioner Bush knows those issues. He knows those issues, and that's exactly what we need here in Texas as our next Attorney General. Somebody that understands and is not afraid to make those bridges. So please, um, we're out here all today. I know we're excited. This is a long haul, and we're going to be supporting Commissioner Bush in this long journey from now until we win in next November. I, I know we're going to get out there. Part of the plan is we're going to go out there. We're going to talk to folks in some of these towns like Del Rio, like El Paso, you know, like Laredo, McAllen, Brownsville. Folks that don't take the time to do those things and understand and meet with Border Patrol and meet with Customs and understand their issues. And that's what Commissioner Bush is all about. I know I've been talking to him over the years over those things, and we're going to do more of it. Thank you for being here today, and thanks for your support. Our next speaker is, a cheer, is the chairwoman of the Hidalgo County Republican Party. Adrian Panay Garza is a strong conservative and a proud South Texas patriot. She is a former vice president of the Texas Young Republicans Federation and a former president of the Hidalgo County Young Republicans. Adrian is widely known as a grassroots activist building teams across the South Texas and fighting for fair honest government. She's a giant in the grassroots movement here in Texas, and we're honored to have her joining us today. Howdy. Howdy. Good afternoon. It's so good to be with you here today in our state capital city of Texas. My name is Adrian Pena Garza, and I am from Deep South Texas. I serve currently as the Hidalgo County Republican Party Chair, the first Hispanic female chair elected to this position. Thank you. I'm here to tell you why I support George P. Bush. I first met George P. Bush at the Republican National Convention in 2012 in Tampa, Florida. I'll never forget my father, former State Representative Aaron Pena. Yay! Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Tell me, oh, thank you. Come, let me introduce you to George Bush. It's important to share with you that prior to 2011, I was a Democrat. Please forgive me. And although I was excited to be with my father and my brother at convention, to see all the pride and enthusiasm and diversity in our party, I was still fairly new to it all. When we finally shook hands, I have to admit, I was shocked. I mean, he looked like me. I mean, he looked like my husband. I mean, he was Hispanic. He is Hispanic. <laughs> I remember thinking, who is this man? What's his story and how did he get here? Why is he Republican? I later found out that he was a former teacher and a veteran, and his mother was born in Guanajuato, Mexico. 
I was intrigued and curious about his life and how he has maneuvered some of life's challenges. So we invited him to the Rio Grande Valley and he came. And honestly, he hasn't stayed away since. Excuse me. Leaders, leaders that take time for the grassroots will always have my support. When statewide elected officials spend most of their time with donors, lobbyists, and special interest groups, it really pisses me off. It says so much about their character and their integrity because the grassroots give so much of their time, their sweat, and their tears. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's actions that will show where the heart is. A lot has happened since I first met George P. It's as if a match was struck and an uncontrollable wildfire is ablaze. That's, why we, that's what we all are, guys, a match, one match that has lit up our state and country. We are the last bastion of hope for this country. Whether you're like me, a walk away, or a long, sorry, lifelong Republican, or a conservative that refuses to sit on the sidelines, we must be that match and continue the fire. If you're here today, I can tell you that you were made for that fire. We were born for a time such as this. And like President Trump has said, the best is yet to come, ladies and gentlemen. George P. has proven that his heart is in the right place and he has earned my trust, which I can say does not happen often. I know what it's like to feel pressure to live up to expectations for love of God and country and family, to leave a legacy behind that your children and grandchildren can be proud of. What I've learned is that it's through service of community that we succeed. It's through hard work and dedication and commitment that one earns trust. George has proven time and time again to be that leader. So let's get to the point and sum it up. Three points on why I support George P. He's his own man who is self-made and I believe has a calling of service and sacrifice. Two, he's proven that he's a man of integrity and will stand for what is right and is not afraid to be who he is. And that, my friends, takes courage. He's a champion of the grassroots and has been working for us for years. South Texas has been all over the media this past year. We made record gains there. We were even highlighted by the New York Times. I mean, it's not every day that five Latina women from the same county, from the same GOP, is highlighted by the New York Times. People are asking all the time, what was the spark that started the fire? I believe, that, I believe it's a combination of things. Women are no longer wanting to take the backseat approach to politics. President Trump empowered millions to be silent no more and to stand up and to speak up. But there is no denying that something very special and powerful happened in Tampa, Florida. I'll call it divine intervention. We have been praying for a leader like George for a very, very long time in Hidalgo County, South Texas. Someone that doesn't turn away the underdog, but empowers them. We were made for the fire, ladies and gentlemen. We must draw a line in the sand for those that have proven to support the, the grassroots, proven to have our state's best interests at heart, and proven that no matter how difficult the situation may seem, we'll do the right thing. We still have a lot of work to do and it's up to us to elect leaders who carry the same fire for our faith, for our family, and our freedom. On behalf of the Peña and the Garza family, we are proud to endorse George P. Bush. God bless. Our next speaker is president of the Fort Worth Police Association, representing 1,700 sworn officers. Manny Ramirez has served in law enforcement for more than a decade. 
as a police officer, as a patrol officer, gang enforcement officer, hostage negotiator, robbery detective, and sergeant. His law enforcement experience includes an assignment with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and National Gang Unit. Manny fights for taxpayers on local, state, and national levels, ensuring that public safety remains a top priority for our elected officers. Let's welcome Manny to the stage, please. Howdy, howdy. Howdy. Uh, so you guys know they say that Texas is the final frontier uh, for the nation when it comes to freedom. Well, I'm from Fort Worth, and we say that Tarrant County is the final frontier for freedom when it comes to Texas. Well, that was proven uh, almost a year ago to the date. We had one of the first ballot measures to defund the police come before our voters. It happened. And the usual suspects lined up. You know, the DNC, BLM, NAACP, even our local paper, they lined up to support that movement to defund the police. Our officers were worried. Our citizens were worried. It would have stripped a billion dollars over 10 years for our police department. Well, we didn't take it lying down. And in Fort Worth, our citizens stood up, our officers stood up, and we, and we defeated that measure with a mandate level 30% victory. Now that fight in that election wasn't easy, but the, the fights in the elections that we have coming up aren't going to be easy either. And in order to win those, we need principled, solid and committed leaders to stand up and fight with us. Leaders like Commissioner Bush. And I'm proud, absolutely. Well, I'm proud today to stand here amongst all of you guys and, you know, stand here and support my friend, our Texas Land Commissioner, George P. Bush, because he's not just another politician. I mean, George P. Bush has lived a life of, life of service. He has lived a life of dedication and he's worked tirelessly to bring our government into the 21st century. Whether it was as an educator, as a lawyer, as a naval officer, or as land commissioner, at every single turn, George P. Bush leads with the John Maxwell maxim of lead from where you are. Now his professional and personal reputation are above reproach, and his dedication to our state and to our nation are undeniable. And so I would say that somebody like George P. Bush is effectively on the front lines. And our men and women in blue know that George P. Bush has their back. Ultimately, George P. Bush knows that our nation's law enforcement is under attack. He sees it every single day that our nation's law enforcement has never been more embattled, they've never been more disrespected, and they've never been more in need of solid, effective leaders to stand up and say that we have your back. We trust that George P. Bush will do that. Now going forward, we know that the times ahead are not going to be easy. We know they're going to be tough. But as a husband, as a father, as a police officer, as a businessman, I'm damn proud that George P. Bush represents me and my family. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm fired up, I'm excited, and you know what? I'm excited for the next generation of conservative leadership here in Texas. I'm excited for George P. Bush to stoke that next chapter. God bless Texas, guys. Are y'all still excited? We, we have one more speaker before the man of the hour. Eric Maroom served as President Trump's Deputy State Director in the 2016 campaign in Texas. He was the key in securing President Trump's victory in Texas and ultimately the presidency in 2016. After the election, Eric worked in office of the Vice President of the United States in the Advancement Department. He is also the former advisor to the Regional Administrator for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and prior uh, the senior advisor to the Department of Energy. Eric's work in Texas 
for the conservative movement is truly unmatched. And we have the incredible, grateful pleasure of having you with us today. Come join us, Eric. How's everybody doing today? Thank you, Mayor Williams. I am honored and excited to be here on this exciting day. Just like the mayor said, uh, in 2015 and 16, I served as President Trump's deputy state director here in our great state of Texas. And then after we won, I got my appointment in his administration up in Washington, D.C. And let me tell everybody here, George P. Bush was one of the very few elected officials that endorsed President Trump. There was not a lot that did, but he was one of the few. And we had the Texas Senate Republican Executive Committee, me committee meeting, and that's when Commissioner Bush uh, got up in front of everybody, all the committee members, all the county chairs and the grassroots activists, and, said, and asked everybody to unite behind candidate Trump in order to defeat Hillary Clinton in November. A lot of people were shocked because we know how hard President Trump went, went after his father. What George P. Bush did was he put the United States and Texas before himself and in supporting Donald Trump. Not only that, he was also the victory chairman of the Texas Republican Party, helping us raise money and being a resource to whatever we needed in order to, to achieve victory in November. Um, just like President Trump said, he was the only Bush that got it right. Now, going into Washington, D.C., I've always heard that, you know, it was corrupt and it was a swamp. I didn't realize how bad it was, and I can't even imagine it's worse now today. The Biden-Harris uh, uh, administration is dangerous for the United States and Texas. The Democrats are coming for Texas. They're laser-focused on our state. They want to take our guns. They want to cheat in our elections. They've crippled our economy. And they have destroyed the energy sector by putting hard-working oil and gas employees out of work. Very sad. Yeah. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have made a lot of big promises. And if they keep those promises, Texans will suffer. That's why we're all, all here today. We need someone to stand between these radical promises and Texans. And that's exactly the man George P. Bush is. He'll always defend Texas against the radical ideals of Washington, D.C. Not only is Commissioner Bush the only candidate in this race with a strong, moral, and unwavering integrity, but the issues that he has always fought for best align with grassroots supporters across Texas. Now, as the general land uh, commissioner, he's achieved so many things, and with the sake of time, I'm only going to name a few. Commissioner Bush frequently visits the border to support and hear from our Border Patrol agents as they defend the border from the crisis in our backyards. Now, folks, I don't know, can you, anybody tell me how many times Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been to our southern border? Zero. Zero. When Kamala Harris was asked by a reporter if she was planning on going for a visit to our southern border, she laughed at the reporter. It, it's, a, it's a joke to her. Commissioner Bush has shown transparency and accountability in his management of the GLO, running the agency like a business, showing responsibility with taxpayer dollars. That sounds a little familiar, kind of how uh, Donald Trump ran the executive branch. Maybe that's why he was so successful. <laughs> Commissioner Bush has come out swinging against human trafficking perpetrators, a huge but often neglected issue in our state. And folks, I don't have to ask this, but I'm going to because I just want to hear y'all cheer. How many of y'all love our police officers? Well, Commissioner Bush has had the backs of our law enforcement officers showing support for them when the radical left came to defund and delegitimize our officers. Now, folks, you've heard uh, from the people before me the incredible leader that Commissioner Bush has been for this state. But I have the pleasure of further introducing the man who needs no introduction. As a U.S. Naval Reserve veteran, George P. served in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom as a Navy intelligence officer. As a successful attorney and businessman, he practiced corporate and securities law and later founded Pennybacker Capital and St. Augustine Partners. So he's a businessman, a great businessman as well. As a dedicated statesman, George P. led the Texas General Land Office in championing private property rights and using a courtroom to defend 
the people of Texas against federal overreach. That's what we need right now more than anything. As a veteran, business attorney, and native Texan, George P. Bush couldn't be more fit for the job at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your friend and mine, the man of the hour, George P. Bush. How we doing, Texas? You know, it's uh, been a rough year on a lot of us, but few industries have had it worse than Texas bars and restaurants. So tonight, I am proud to be here with you at Buford's having a drink and reminding ourselves that Texas is back in business. You know, many of you have traveled far distances. Many of you have been with me from the beginning, and we started this journey six years ago, and I will never forget it. And when we got to work, we talked about how we are the Lone Star State. We are an exceptional state. The reason is because we believe you can go as far and as fast as your dreams can take you. We believe that government should work for you, not against you. And we went to work on day one, and the results speak for themselves. This has been the most successful, this has been the most conservative time in the story past of the General Land Office. And let me tell you why. We let go of 20% of the workforce, asking more with less, to demand more of our government, saving the taxpayer millions of dollars. With the permanent school fund, we brought oil and gas leases online, generating hundreds of millions more for public schools in Texas. I championed conservative ideas in the classroom, like school choice. And yes, I sued the, yeah, we got school choice right here. And yes, I sued the Obama administration and won. We got some hook'em horns here. Got some Aggies too. Uh, when the federal government tried to take private and public lands, we sent the message back to Washington, D.C., don't mess with Texas. But these aren't just conservative ideas. I think they bring us together as Texans, and that's what brings us together tonight. And when I came to the office, I tried to follow the example of Abraham Lincoln, our greatest Republican, trying to bring honor, character, integrity to the workforce. Because at the core of our movement, it's about doing the right thing. But most importantly, it's about doing the right thing when no one is watching. You know, President Trump was absolutely right when he said, drain the swamp. Does anybody remember that? Because we have too, way too much corruption in Washington, D.C. Where else can it Somebody like Hunter Biden get fabulously wealthy and jeopardize national security at the same time. But we've got our own problems in Austin. We have a web of corruption and lies that affect one of the highest offices in our land. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And it's time for a change. Right. Elections are about choices. In 1976, Ronald Reagan ran against Gerald Ford. A, a total outsider against the sitting incumbent president. Why? Because he felt that conservatives needed to have a choice in the Republican Party when a scandal was plaguing the highest office in the land. But in our times here in Texas, we have a scandal that's play, plaguing one of our highest offices. And I believe conservatives should have a choice in the Republican primary. You know, for generations, we've been known as the law and order party, and rightfully so. We back the thin blue line because we don't want to see rioting and lawlessness in our streets. But with that comes a responsibility to hold those accountable that are entrusted with enforcing our laws. That's why we confronted Bill Clinton in the 90s, not necessarily because of his personal behavior, as bad as that was. We did so because he abused the office, he breached the vow to the Constitution, to the laws of the state, and to our country, and then lied about it under oath. Yeah, but as conservatives, we can't look the other way when one of our own does the same thing over and over yeah. again. We need more elected officials that uphold the law rather than find exceptions to it. 
And that's why tonight, in front of so many friends and supporters, I am proud to announce I am a Republican candidate to be the next Texas Attorney General. We got some banners up there. Oh, we're missing a banner right there. There you go. I do so because enough is enough, Ken. You've brought way too much scandal and too little integrity to this office. As a career politician for 20 years, it's time for you to go. We need an attorney general that's above reproach, not under criminal indictment for securities fraud and under FBI investigation for bribery and corruption. We need an attorney general stacking up mugshots of hardened criminals and gangs and networks in our state. Not an attorney general that's stacking up mugshots of himself. But I want to be clear. I'm not running against one man. I'm running for a set of ideas, ideas that bring us together tonight. Ideas like a government happy to give you anything you want is probably a government more than happy to take away everything you have that it's okay to live out our faith in the public square, that we shouldn't apologize for the exceptionalism of our country, and that woke culture and critical race theory is, is damaging future generations, and we won't take it. But the left, the modern day left, have a completely different viewpoint, but let's give them credit. They've been totally honest about where they would take our country. They said that they would try to pass the Green New Deal which would cut off hundreds of thousands of jobs in the oil and gas industry. Hardworking people have been laid off because of this president. We've seen an open borders policies that's resulted in the largest surge of illegal immigration on our southern border in modern American history, with no end in sight, no sense of urgency, and no leadership from Washington, D.C. We've seen a spending plan now presenting $6 trillion in new spending and trillions more in taxation, piling up a mountain of debt that our children and our grandchildren can never hope to repay. But as Republicans, we don't have to sit back and take it. If we put the right team on the field, I guarantee you we will take back our country in November of 2022. I want you to know, as Attorney General, I would first work to secure the border. In fact, tomorrow I will be going to the Rio Grande Valley, the most highly, tra the most highly trafficked area in the entire southern border. I will honor our border patrol officials. I will hold deadbeat bureaucrats and DC politicians accountable in the courthouse. And I will work to get the, the, the politicians in DC to do their job. Second, I will restore accountability to this office, just like I did at the land office. Getting rid of wasteful spending, zero-based budgeting, restoring morale to the state's most important law firm. Third, I will confront the human traffickers. This is one of the fastest growing crimes in the state of Texas, and we are not doing enough. Just like I did during the legislative session, I will stand shoulder to shoulder with human trafficking survivors and tell their stories of trauma and abuse. And as the lead prosecutor for the state, my message to the Johns, the pimps, and the perps, your days are over. I'm coming after you. Finally, I won't apologize for back in the thin blue line in Texas. Law enforcement, law enforcement is under assault. Even in our own legislature, we saw 200 bills seeking to strip their authority, making their jobs harder and separating us from the anarchy and the chaos in the streets. As attorney generals, I will confront cities like Austin that defunded the police, and I will work on legislation that defunds cities that defund the police in Texas. One final thing I want to share with my fellow Republicans tonight. The Democrats are all in on this race. They see that Ken Paxton is our weak link. They know that he was the lowest vote getter statewide in the last election cycle. And they know that if he is our nominee once again, they have their first statewide elective office in close to 30 years. You and I have worked way too hard over these past few years to allow that to happen. The consequences would be too great for the state and for this country. And so, I just want you to know that I'm not afraid of this fight. I welcome it. All throughout my life, I've been willing to chart a different course, take a different path, 
if I felt it was the right thing to do. Whether it was teaching in a tough school after college, joining the military, serving in Afghanistan as part of Operation Enduring Freedom, or becoming the only member of the Bush family to endorse Donald J. Trump for President of the United States. I'm willing to hold that line. I'm willing to chart that different course. I'm willing to fight for Texas values, and I want to defend the Constitution. Our First Amendment right to live out our faith in the public square and, and yes, have a conservative conversation online and on a college campus. Our Second Amendment right to own and to bear arms. I will protect the integrity of our election systems with voter ID and eliminating ballot harvesting in Texas. And most importantly, I will protect the rights of the unborn. I will work to defund Planned Parenthood, and I will seek to end the tragedy of abortion in our times. So ladies and gentlemen, that's our mission. This is our moment. When you and I work together, we make great things happen. And we will restore honor and integrity to the Texas Attorney General's office. May God bless each and every one of you, and may God bless the great state of Texas.